Just a short time ago, we stopped by the National Response Coordination Center located inside FEMA headquarters here in Washington. I spoke with Acting Homeland Security Secretary Kevin McAleenan, and I began by asking him what the forecast track is showing. Right, so the latest forecast, the, the storm is hitting the northern islands of the Bahamas right now. They're starting to experience hurricane force winds. Uh, it will go across the northern islands of the Bahamas, and then we expect it to stall out. Most models show it stalling out about 60 miles offshore, uh, not making landfall. But that doesn't mean it's not dangerous. In fact, we expect hurricane force winds to potentially hit the coast of Florida, and then a prolonged rain event combined with storm surge that's going to be very difficult as the storm starts to move northward, most likely up the coast of Florida and toward Georgia and South Carolina. But, but at this point, you're pretty sure it will not hit North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida? Right. The National Hurricane Center uh, says that most of the models show it staying offshore uh, and moving slowly north, uh, but that, that, that means the storm effect will be prolonged uh, on the coastline. Uh, a rain event, storm surge, and hurricane force winds potentially. Because this was so hard to predict, this right. hurricane, are there concerns that people will just stay in their homes, they won't get out of their homes, they won't do, uh, they won't take precautions? Right. We want people to listen to the state and local emergency managers, listen to the evacuation orders, make sure you're prepared, make sure you have seven days of supplies, medicine, food, even pet food, really be thinking about all those things that you might need for a prolonged event. Uh, so we, we want people to listen to state and locals and be uh, very aggressive in, in watching the storm. And, and you've got President Trump coming here right. this morning. What do you tell him? What are you doing here in the center today? Well, so we've had lots of time to prepare for the, the length of the of the storm as it's approaching uh, the American coastline. Uh, so we're going to have all of the elements of the U.S. government, uh, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of Commerce, Secretary of Health and Human Services. It's really a whole of government effort. And the president's going to make sure that we're on the, on the same page, that we're tracking this, and that we're going to be ready. And, and do you expect any mandatory evacuations in those areas? Uh, so that's a state and local decision decision on mandatory evacuations, but, but yes, as the storm gets closer, there will be counties that will likely uh, face a mandatory order. There's already some that are under voluntary evacuation orders now. And, and FEMA came under fire, as we all know, in 2017 for the handling uh, of Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. Can you guarantee that your agency is prepared for this storm? So I, I can guarantee that FEMA and all of our federal partners are doing everything they can uh, to support our, our state and local uh, partners that manage and execute the, the emergency response. Uh, we have had a lot of time for pre-position uh, resources and assets, urban search and rescue teams, our incident management assistance teams in Florida and Georgia. Uh, we're still assessing the damage in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, it's better than originally anticipated, obviously. Uh, but yes, we are fully prepared and ready uh, to support the state and locals to respond to the storm. And I know Pete Gaynor, who was just walking right. us through this facility, the acting FEMA administrator, told Congress back in June that the agency was struggling to ensure that it had enough disaster responders in reserve and was down about a thousand employees. Has that been fixed? That, that has been fixed and we have 3,000 people already deployed across the federal government agencies for this storm. Uh, about half of those are direct FEMA employees. Again, those urban search and rescue teams and, and IMATs are already in place. Uh, but we've got a very experienced emergency response leadership team uh, with the acting administrator, Pete Gaynor, with Jeff Byard overseeing ops. Uh, these guys have done it at the state and local level. They've done it at the federal level. It's a battle-hardened team right behind me here uh, in the NRCC who's dealt with the storms in 17 and 18. Uh, so we, we're ready. And, and you, you talk about it not making landfall, but there's sustained winds, there's rain. What are the concerns about the power grid in these right. areas? So, yeah, there'll, there'll be powder outages, no question, and people need to be prepared for that. There will be storm surge, and, and unfortunately, this aligns, this storm's arrival aligns with what's called the king tide, uh, one of the times of the year when the tide's the highest in, in the southeastern United States. So that means a storm surge and some of the coastal flooding could be more significant. Uh, that's something we're watching closely and worried about. Uh, but a prolonged period where there's a rain event, where there's a wind event, and storm surge combined could have really complicated uh, results uh, for some of the coastal counties from Florida up to South Carolina. And, and I want to ask you about these funds 
that were transferred. Homeland Security informed Congress in July right. that you will transfer $155 million from FEMA's disaster relief fund to ICE, right. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. The, your letter to Congress said that, quote, absent significant new catastrophic events, the fund would still have enough money to operate. Doesn't Hurricane Dorian qualify as one of those potential cat catastrophic events? It is, but I want to emphasize that no potential transfers, no money has been moved yet. We have to do a notification to Congress in advance. Uh, any potential transfers will not impact our ability to respond to this storm or any other storms in the rest of the hurricane season. There are two different elements of the disaster recovery fund. Uh, the major disaster fund has $25 billion in it. So $155 million transfer from the base fund is not going to affect our ability to, to respond and recover from a major disaster. Senator Chuck Schumer talked about the timing right. of this, said it was, quote, backwards and cruel to talk about this FEMA funding at the start of the hurricane season. Republican Senator Shelley Moore expressed concern about transferring that money to why do this now, right. even though you say it will be somewhat delayed? Well, the start of the hurricane the season the hurricane is season. June 1st. It's not in, in August. And we did notify Congress in July, so just to clarify on the timing. Uh, but we asked for this funding from Congress in the emergency supplemental. Uh, we needed that funding for Immigration and Customs Enforcement to respond to the ongoing humanitarian and border security crisis at the border. Uh, that Congress didn't see fit to, to provide that funding. So we have to look at, a, at departmental sources across that have a limited impact, but will support the ongoing management of that crisis as well. And, and I want to turn to this mass shooting mm -hmm. in, in West Texas. Right. I know you certainly have a law enforcement background and a terrorism background. We know it started with a traffic stop. Right. That is unusual. What's your take on what's happened there? So I don't want to jump to any conclusions on this event. We're monitoring closely the reports, the investigative follow-up from the state and locals along with the FBI. But it's extraordinarily concerning uh, to have that level, that length of an event, to have that many people uh, injured and, and five killed at this point. It, it's, it's devastating. And it's, you know, 300 miles from El Paso. This is a region that's, that's really felt uh, the impact of mass attacks these, in the recent weeks. And we're very concerned about it. will be following up aggressively. There have been more than 50 people killed in mass shootings this month alone. Right. Should we consider these shootings a homeland security threat? They absolutely are a homeland security threat. Uh, in our counterterrorism strategy and approach, domestic terrorism has taken a, a frontline uh, focus for us. Since April, when I've become acting secretary, we set up a new office, targeted violence and terrorism prevention, with an explicit focus and balance on domestic terrorism, uh, including racially motivated violent extremism, which we've seen much too much of in the recent weeks and months. Should DHS be devoting more more resources to fighting this kind of crime, these mass shootings? Right. We actually have a, a ton of resources devoted to this kind of crime across uh, the DHS components, U.S. Secret Service, the National Threat Assessment Center, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. But should there they be more, 40, given people. what's happening and that there are more frequent in this administration right. so far? Yeah, that's a conversation that we're having uh, as an interagency team with the FBI, with the Office of Management and Budget, uh, to see what the right resource level is going forward to make sure that we can continue our very strong focus on the international terrorism threat and the prevention levels we've achieved, uh, but also make sure we're balancing that out with effective efforts on domestic terrorism as well. Okay. Thanks so much for Thank joining you. us this morning, Secretary. Good to see you. You too. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.